Sports. It's in the game. After missing out on the calendar due to the pandemic last season, we finally make the return of the Dutch Grand Prix held last in 1985 when the late great Nicky Lauda took victory here and it's a very different place now. As you can see, the stage is filled with Max Legion members all in a sea of orange. No doubt that he has amassed quite the following Max Verstappen since entering Formula 1 in 2015. Not many changes to the circuit. Of course, the two famous bankings at the beginning and end of the circuit are going to hopefully give us some overtaking. Round 14 then of Formula 1 in 2021. It is looking like Bottas' is title to lose now. And will we see the appearance of the safety car? We are edging ever closer to a full season without it being used. Well, the Max Legion certainly did have a lot to cheer about yesterday. It's another Mercedes front row as we take a look at the grid and Valtteri Bottas just seems to have one up over everybody so far. Even Lewis Hamilton struggling against him now. Sergio Perez lines up alongside Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz on the top of side along the Norris on row three. Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly get to have Lance Stroll and Max Verstappen only managed 10th due to a grid penalty. Kimi Raikkonen and George Russell promoted to 11th and 12th for the same reason. The TP is alongside Schumacher with his best start of the season in P14. Jackson is alongside Vettel who suffered from a grid penalty. Same with Sonoda. He lines up 18th alongside Ocon. It's Giovinazzi and Fernando Alonso at the back of the grid today. And rumours were filled this week that Fernando Alonso is looking to re-retire from Formula 1. Um, it sounds ludicrous as this was his return season and it is of course uh, sources uh, that are reporting that so Alonso certainly if that is the case um, I guess the comeback hasn't really gone as well as you'd hoped um, it's really somewhat of a surprise to be honest um, but that really if that is the case then that opens up a wealth of opportunities for Aiden Jackson now uh, as he could uh, be a front runner for Alpine and uh, that would be interesting well Jackson's been doing the rounds since Silverstone hasn't he um, obviously he's been now uh, Red Bull and Ferrari are monitoring him closely but have ruled out a 2022 seat which pretty much confirms the fact as we've always said Ferrari and Red Bull are looking to stick uh, Mercedes could be that as well. We also heard earlier this week that Mercedes are going to wait until the end of the season now to reveal their driver lineup, and that has everything to do with the championship battle between Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. And as we said at the top of the show, this is pretty much looking like Bottas's title to lose now. He just seems no in a being. huge, rich vein of form, and no one can beat it. Even Lewis Hamilton's struggling, and he's been. Uh, Obviously, he's been having a bit of an off-season, Lewis Hamilton. He's won a couple of races this year, but he's still not reached the Magic 100. Uh, that's been a bit difficult to get uh, since last season when he took Michael Schumacher's record of 91 wins. I believe that was uh, probably about a race or two before the Turkish Grand Prix. It was such a long time ago. We've had so much happen, I forgot. But um, he's still three wins away from the Magic 100, and now possible Alonso retirement. Watch this space. Aiden Jackson could literally end up anywhere now. And of course he's still uh, probably rumoured to be Aston Martin. And those are stories for another day. The championship battle continues here today. Five red lights out of the drivers. Green flag at the back. You know what happens. It is lights out. And away we go, go, go for the first Dutch Grand Prix since 1985. And Valtteri Bottas has got the perfect start. And Lewis Hamilton has got the perfect start as well. 
Uh, again, Mercedes leading 1-2. Perez tries to hang it in, uh, going into turn 3, but it is vintage Mercedes at the front. Aiden Jackson has already moved uh, to... I think Jackson moved, I think he's gone back down. Mick Schumacher is showing us P11. Another electric start from Mick Schumacher it seems. And he's beaten Jackson as well. Mick Schumacher with another electric start. He's right on the tail of Lance Stroll. Uh, who's in the last points playing position. Could this finally be the weekend that Mick Schumacher scores his first football point? He's right on the tail of Lance Stroll. Of course, Lance Stroll has the Mercedes engine in the back of that Aston Martin. There's a bit of a gap forming here. Kimi Raikkonen is uh, holding up a train of Vettel, Russell, Latifi, Ocon, Sonoda, Alonso and Giovinazzi. What is happening there? There's been a bit of a break in the field and that's perfect for Haas if that is the case. Because hopefully if they can pass Stroll they can race away uh, from the Aston Martins who took... Uh, the Aston Martins, the Alfa Romeos, my apologies, who took ninth in the Constructors Championship with a wealth of points for Kimi Raikkonen and there's Aiden Jacks going down the inside of Mick Schumacher so he obviously wants the point for himself uh, which is rather interesting uh, no team orders at Haas then Aiden Jackson uh, obviously started behind Schumacher on the grid he's actually gone back ahead of him now but how did Schumacher even get to 11th meanwhile we've got two cars in the pits already we've got this whole uh, four cars almost separated by less than a tablecloth uh, <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen is in the pits as is George Russell so there was obviously contact in the first corner with both involved and both have lost out and have to change their front wigs did Riker beat Russell out of the pits he did uh, yes he did uh, obviously he came in first as Alfa Romeo were higher up the pits uh, than uh, George Russell's team were of course the pits are determined by constructors standing order both Alpines towards the back then here's the start Valtteri Bottas uh, on the soft tyres getting away effortlessly at the front and Lewis Hamilton not able to make a move into turn one. There was going to be very que uh, very many questions over the overtaking uh, at this circuit. As you can see, it looks very tight. So here's the start from Mick Schumacher. It is vintage Mick Schumacher. Get away. He's up towards the wall as he passed the Williams. Mick Schumacher, vintage start. He almost got past Lance Stroll as well. That's an absolutely electric start from Mick Schumacher. That's much more like it from Schumacher on the start absolutely perfect for him from 15 to 11th unfortunately he lost out to Stroll at the uh, the second half of the banking as uh, Stroll had better uh, kind of uh, exit of that corner there so here's the start from Raikkonen's perspective I'm assuming we're going to see how the damage was caused uh, Raikkonen is the one putting Schumacher towards the wall and there's the contact Mick Schumacher hitting Raikkonen but really I think that was more Raikkonen's fault and then there was a brush of tyres between Russell and Raikkonen uh, so that's the reason Russell had to uh, pit for the new front wing. Uh, that was really all caused by Schumacher being pushed up towards the wall by Kimi Raikkonen. So really, to me, that's his, uh, Raikkonen's own fault, uh, really, leaving Schumacher with almost no space. Schumacher having to be daring as Aiden Jackson goes down the entire Lance Stroll. And uh, he's had no problem passing Lance Stroll in that section there, down the inside of the first corner. But Stroll tries to fight back. They're going to be side by side through this very fast section. Now we're going to go into the banking. That's a fantastic shot. They're still side by side. And Haas is really sticking with Aston Martin. And uh, Jackson looked to have got him. Brilliant move by Jackson. And unlike the J Spanish Grand Prix, uh, Jackson is able to win that was side by side battle. Tremendous move and once again by the hotshot British rookie that is turning heads all round the paddock and now has a plethora of seats hopefully open to him. Fantastic move and of course uh, this could do well for Rain Jackson's stock when it comes to Aston Martin. Don't forget that the British Grand Prix Aston Martin it seems like a, such a long time ago now but it wasn't. Uh, Jackson was uh, supposedly being approached by Aston Martin for a seat and now Lance Stroll is going to try and retire it down, but down the inside he took way too much curb there it's going to pull him offline Jackson is a bit wide uh, but uh, Stroll really compromised himself uh, by taking to the curb now can Mick Schumacher here pass Lance Stroll it's lap three will Mick have DRS uh, he probably will but I'm assuming Stroll will also have DRS of uh, Jackson so it's going to be even Steven I'm unfortunately for big Schumacher fans uh, as he won't be able to pass Stroll there's a lock up there I'm assuming that's by Jackson so Stroll is actually uh, at a tyre disadvantage here because both Haas drivers are on the soft tyres and Stroll is on the hard so for all intents and purposes Jackson and Schumacher should have really like 
whizzed past Straw, and there's Straw was tearing the wall. What a move there by Lance Straw, and unfortunately he couldn't make it. He had to be daring there from Lance Straw, and just about enough to get through, but he had to concede the position. There was probably going to be a bit of a collision there if Straw hadn't banned out of that. So great race sense there by Lance Stroll. And uh, well, then nose to tell, Schumacher is hanging with Stroll in the Aston Martin. I wonder if Jackson's playing some games here because it seems to me that Jackson's not getting away. But of course, uh, the Haas can be uh, they can be deceptive because the Haas can be rather so. Oh my goodness me! Did Aiden Jackson cut across Stroll there? Schumacher down the outside. Schumacher down the outside. Fantastic move. But did Aiden Jackson block off Lance Stroll there? That looked a bit sus. From Aiden Jackson, I think that might have been a bit of a block there. I wonder what the FIA are going to take a view of this. He is under investigation. So let's see here. I'm sure, I almost think I saw Jackson cutting across Stroll there. Oh, that's a bit... I don't know about that one. I think... Well, it is the one move, to be fair. I think it's on the edge, personally. I think that's on the edge of the rules. It is the one move, I suppose. That's a bit better looking from Schumacher's perspective. Schumacher's not going to care one bit. He goes round the outside of both of them here. Fantastic move. But was that aided by Aiden Jackson blocking Stroll? Uh, the FIA might want to take a look at that. The incident is under investigation, but... Uh, well done, man. Great driving. You put him under pressure, and he made a mistake, and you did it. Great job. Keep ticking things off the list. Copy. Well, Gary Gannon certainly thinks it was a great move by Schumacher that was forced into a mistake, but I think Jackson had more to do with it than Gary Gannon will probably admit. Because uh, that looked to me like a block by Jackson. Uh... I wonder what the FA's decision is going to be on that, because that does look a bit of a, a not so... Really appreciate the effort here, Aiden, but be careful of that next time. I think we're going to get away with it, because it was just on the edge, but it might take a dim view over next time. Copy. I wasn't trying to block him. So Jackson says he wasn't trying to block Lance Stroll. Black and white flag for car 89. That's Aiden Jackson for driving standard. So he's got a warning. He's got away with it. Uh, I think we've seen that before. Uh, to be honest, we've seen uh, blocking for teammates before. But I think the move that Jackson did uh, really put Stroll in a kind of uh, dangerous predicament. If Stroll hadn't slammed on the brakes, there could have been a crash there. And I think that's what the FIA are doing. It's not so much the tactic, because we have seen that before, but I think it's the fact that Stroll really had to slam on the brake. It was almost like he was being brake tested there by Jackson. Uh, now, the Haas can be deceptive, uh, because it is generally slow, uh, but uh, Jackson was having no problem passing Schumacher in the banking. He's, he's really got a good exit from the banking there. Uh, black and white flag then for Aiden Jackson. That's a warning then, so he won't get any penalty points for that. Uh, but we've seen Jackson valiantly defend before as well. Um, so I guess what they're saying is the move probably looks worse than it is. Uh, and they've given Jackson a warning for that. So I think that's probably fair enough uh, considering we've seen the sort of blocking for allowing teammates to pass before. It's nothing really new. Uh, but Jackson is in a points playing position. So uh, Schumacher obviously benefited from that being round the outside. It was a fantastic move but... I do think Stroll was a bit brake checked by Jackson. I don't think it was a legit block and a, a, the intent to take him out of the race, but that really was right on the edge there from Jackson. That's pretty much the first real incident that Jackson has had in his uh, first year of Formula 1. We've not really talked about incidents when it comes to Aiden Jackson, but that, uh, that's certainly, I think the punishment fits the crime. I, I do think that. Uh, Jackson just getting a warning there, so it won't be any penalty points or time penalties for Jackson, which is fair enough because I think we have seen that before. But I think, it, like I said, I think it was the move uh, that Jackson forcing Stroll to break much harder than he probably would have liked into a corner. Uh, Stroll didn't own the corner either, so there's that as well. So Stroll was coming down there, and then the door closed. So it's not like Stroll owned the corner and owned the right to the inside line there, uh, but he was rather cut off by Aiden Jackson from doing that. So, definitely the right decision uh, by Michael Massey, uh, the race director and the race stewards, to give Jackson just a warning for that. So, back to the front then. Lewis Hamilton is keeping with Valtteri Bottas right now for this Dutch Grand Prix. They have absolutely raced their way at the front Mercedes. They are stamping their authority on this season now in pretty much vintage Mercedes fashion. Or 
for Lewis Hamilton's case, we know he can come back from big deficits in the championship, but over the last, over this season, Lewis has definitely not looked at his best. It's been Valtteri Bottas that has really had the foot in front of him, as it were, and today it seems like more of the case as well. But this time, Hamilton is actually right with Bottas. So we're probably going to keep an eye on this battle to begin with, because Bottas will have no aid from DRS. Uh, it's going to be the same in terms of the pit stops, because they're both on the soft tyres. Where is Max Verstappen? I hear you ask. He is P8, uh, ahead of Ricardo and Mick Schumacher. There's a 12 second gap between Ricardo and Mick Schumacher, so Schumacher is not going to get any higher than 10th today. Uh, but it looks like Jackson is really playing rear gun to Mick Schumacher, and it's the second time in two races that Aiden is really helping Schumacher out. So obviously he doesn't want to steal all the points for himself, so it is great team play from Aiden Jackson. But now we're on Stroll. I think we'll be talking about that for a while. I don't think it's like anything like malicious or hasty in it. But I think it's because of the way Stroll had to break and get out of the move. He was trying to go around the outside as well. So it really made uh, Stroll a really bad line through that corner. And I think it could have been avoided. I think that's also what the FIA stewards have been saying. Uh, so black and white flag for Jackson. Uh, his team obviously said they might get away with it because it was pretty much on the edge. We have seen that kind of hard racing before. Uh, not even Jackson, but from this man, Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen, who were bumping each other off the track at the British Grand Prix, I believe it was last year or the year before. Uh, so it's nothing new, uh, but maybe the fact that Stroll really probably felt like he was a bit brake tested, even if that wasn't the intention, uh, like we said, I think it's the right decision. So Max Verstappen here, very odd predicament, because he can't pass Pierre Gasly right now in the Alpha Turi. Uh, Mustafa has not really looked at it this season, that is for sure. There's not been much for the Max Legion to cheer about, even though they are filling the stands today. Uh, very much loyal to Max Verstappen as they have been for the last seven years. It's hard to believe Max Verstappen's been in F1 that long uh, already, but he's made so many headlines for himself uh, that uh, you'd think he'd be a veteran by now, but he's still quite young. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it seems that today, or this season rather, He's not going to be one of the main players in the championship, and that's more due to the car's poor reliability than Max himself. Uh, he's had a couple of wins this season that were rather snatched off him uh, due to reliability issues. And uh, now here we are back with the Haas boys, and Schumacher is literally... Uh, that's the best thing you could see right now. The best thing he can see is his Haas teammate uh, keeping Stroll behind. Uh, for as long as possible. So I'm assuming that Mick will get priority again, uh, very much like at Spa, and uh, we'll get all the priority to get into the points, uh, hopefully. Uh, so this could finally be the weekend where Mick Schumacher scores some points. Uh, he definitely came close at Spa, but the car wasn't up to it. It's probably going to be the case again, but they might as well try while they can. Uh, Jackson is now being chased by both Aston Martin. Sebastian Vettel is caught back up to his teammate. This will be interesting. Uh, there's a two second gap uh, between Vettel and Sonoda. So Jackson holding this train up behind him is actually bringing the likes of uh, Sonoda, both Alpines, both Alfa Romeos and George Russell really kind of back into play. Uh, even though Raikkonen, to be fair, is eight seconds behind his own teammate, Antonio Giovinazzi, because the Alfa Romeos just don't look at it today, uh, which will be thankful for Haas if they can get this point uh, from Mick Schumacher at the moment. And uh, it seems to have really settled down now. Uh, Hamilton is still behind Bottas, and Max is still behind Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Turi. It's quite uh, unusual to see an Alpha Turi leading a Red Bull at the moment and not really getting out of the way, um, which is, uh, I'm sure, Helmut Marco is going to be uh, down to the Alpha Turi garage in a bit to get Pierre Gasly out of the way. But to be fair, uh, Gasly's already dropped off the tail of Carlos Sainz, so, uh, and Max will probably have his race, uh, his tyres destroyed by following Gasly, so Max is pretty much out of contention for this race now, uh, with 11 laps gone already. And, uh, let's see round the banking then. Max should really have it over Gasly, there we go, down the outside, but Gasly had to pin anyway, but it, Max is going to get the DRS, uh, because he was behind Gasly in the detection zone, the McLaren of Ricardo also came into the pits. Uh, so, that's crucial for Max, if he can get a couple of uh, good laps uh, out of his tyres uh, to pit after Gasly and Ricardo, he might end up ahead of them, but we'll have to see. And, uh, well, 
Here's the main two at the front. They have absolutely dropped Perez by three seconds now. And pretty much in a race of their own at the front of the moment. An absolutely vintage Mercedes performance yet again. As, uh, well, they've been the dominant outfit this season. They've had a few off races as well. But in the second half, they have pretty much dominated the second half since it kicked off at uh, Silverstone, more or less. Uh, three wins on the bounce uh, at the moment, with uh, Bottas taking uh, the win in Hungary and Belgium as well. So Bottas is now on for three in a row. In comes Lewis Hamilton then to change tyres. Is he going to undercut Bottas, maybe? He's going to go into the hard, so he's going to go to the end of the race. Interesting call here by Hamilton. He's going to get a little held up by Charles Leclerc, but I don't think it's going to affect him too much. He's going to obviously going to get back ahead of him. Perez and Sainz have gone on for another lap. Obviously with Ferrari having to put Charles Leclerc. Schumacher is 8th and Jackson is ninth now. They're obviously profiting from the uh, profiting from the pit stops ahead. More or less. And, uh, the Haas boys are actually going a long way on the soft tyres. They've actually gone into lap 13. So they're going quite long in there. The Haas boys are going around the outside of uh, Max Verstappen. And Verstappen is going to lose out. So Verstappen pits and his day goes from bad to worse. Uh, because now he's going to have to try and pass Aiden Jackson. We're going to be getting a real battle then between, once again, the man Max Verstappen and the man that gets a lot of comparisons to Max Verstappen in his racecraft in the form of Aiden Jackson. So this could be quite interesting. And already Max Verstappen is right up the rear wing of Aiden Jackson trying to look for a way past. And uh, no way past on that one. And uh, let's see if he tries down uh, the... Uh, I think the DRS uh, first zone is after this corner here, I think. And he tries down the inside, and Jackson, and now he's going to put, there he goes, and DRS will be activated, but also Jackson will get DRS off his teammate, more or less, just about. Uh, down the inside goes Max Verstappen in that corner, the Lance Stroll tried to pass him, and once again, he takes too much curve. Lewis Hamilton has moved up to third, Perez is in the pits, uh, along with Sainz. And uh, who's going to pit first for the Haas boys here? I'm assuming Schumacher's going to come in first uh, because he's the man ahead. Yes, he does. So now, can Adrian Jackson hold off Max Verstappen and the queue of cars behind him long enough uh, for Schumacher to catch back up? This might be a train that he's swarming, but he also could aid Schumacher as well and bring him back into play uh, from where he loses his pit stop. So Schumacher's going to the end of the race on those hard tyres. Tire wear isn't a huge factor here, even with the couple of bankings. Uh, very NASCAR-esque in the bankings as we saw with Stroll and Jackson earlier. We saw a NASCAR-esque kind of uh, scenario there. So Mick Schumacher's done really well because to be fair, he's dropped down to 15th place but he's come out comfortably ahead of the TV and Giovinazzi and Alonso who all didn't have to pit earlier. Raikkonen and Russell obviously did for contact on the first lap. I'm surprised Schumacher didn't have any damage uh, that he needed to repair in that collision, but uh, like we said, where could he really go? He was kind of forced towards the wall uh, by Kimi Raikkonen, so he pretty much made that himself. Uh, but um, Mick's done really well there, so hopefully if he can catch back up to the train that Jackson's forming, it'll put him back in 10th place, uh, more or less, uh, because Max Verstappen would usually be ahead. It's really dependent now on how far the Aston Martins go. They are both on the hard tyres, interestingly. So maybe they'll be able to catch my, uh, Haas out. Obviously Haas have a speed deficit to the Aston Martin and pretty much the rest of the field as well. So in comes Jackson. Obviously he's going to be carrying that warning for the rest of the race now. And uh, Jackson's going onto the hard tyres as well. Schumacher's going to comfortably beat him out of the pits. So it's really the first weekend where Mick has generally looked even with Jackson. And that has proven the case there as uh, Schumacher gets out comfortably ahead of him. So, around this weekend has been Schumacher's best one so far. And look at this! Unbeknownst to us, Lewis Hamilton has undercut Valtteri Bottas and leads to the Dutch Grand Prix. Absolutely crucial then, we missed it. But Lewis Hamilton coming in first aided him in taking the lead. Now, what are Mercedes going to do? Because Bottas is in prime position at the moment, but his main championship rival is his teammate. So I'm assuming that Mercedes will play equal status with Hamilton and Bottas because they are both in the championship fight. There would be no reason to favour one over the other. 
Uh, if someone else was involved, then they probably would let Bottas through, but uh, very much everyone from Sainz down is pretty much out of the title fight at this point, as we are at round 14 with six to go. Wow, Lewis Hamilton, he did great on the outlaps after his pit stop uh, to bring uh, real Bottas in. He's pretty much reeled him in, more or less. Wonderful stuff by Hamilton. Vintage Lewis Hamilton. Uh, but Bottas is sticking with him. He's going to have DRS now. But it isn't going to be the same scenario that Hamilton found himself in before the pit stops. Uh, where he was behind Bottas and couldn't find a way through. They've dropped Perez by two seconds. I don't think Perez has been catching them slightly. I think it was three seconds before they came into the pits. So the top 10 then, uh, led by Lewis Hamilton from Valtteri Bottas. Sergio Perez is ahead of Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen is now up to 7th. The Aston Martins uh, then follow 10 seconds or so behind. And Pierre Gasly is in 10th place. So Max Verstappen has actually finally been able to uh, get back ahead of Gasly. So they're pretty much worked out as Max Verstappen intended. Great outlaps from uh, Max Verstappen to get back up into 7th. But he's unfortunately not going to catch Carlos Sainz or anyone else for that matter. Oh, this is a win that Lewis Hamilton desperately needs. He's losing ground in the championship after the retirement in Hungary. And the pit, uh, pit lane mishap in Belgium that took him out of the points. Lewis Hamilton has not had a vintage season, that's for sure. It looked like it at the beginning, didn't it? Taking the win in Bahrain and then trading it with Bottas in uh, Imola. But then took a great win in Portimao with a battle with Max Verstappen. But... Uh, since then, it was pretty much back and forth, but Valtteri Bottas is the man that has the initiative, as Lewis has been kind of struggling uh, this season. But today, he's done a great thing in undercutting Bottas in the pit stop phase. And he's got Mercedes to run away with it now. The question is, who will win? Bottas has closed up on Hamilton with the aid of DRS. So keeping an eye on Mick Schumacher's progress, he's in uh, P13 at the moment. Daniel Ricciardo is going to be almost impossible for him to catch. The Aston Martins are going very long at the moment on the hard tyres. This could really pay dividends to Aston Martin, uh, considering they've been behind both horses for some time. And uh, maybe Vettel, being further behind Stroll than he would have liked earlier, maybe that will aid him uh, in looking after the tyres. And I, I do believe the Haas, the Aston Martins are going to comfortably beat the Haas drivers because Mick Schumacher is already 18 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo. You add that uh, to where Lance Stroll is and there's about a second separating Stroll from Ricciardo. So that's about 19 to 20 seconds. Uh, you need about 20 to 25 to make a pit stop and get out ahead. So the Aston Martins are going to beat Schumacher and Jackson out of the pit sadly. For, for Haas that is and for Mick Schumacher really it's another race where the cars really let him down because it was a superb overtaking move even if it was aided by Jackson blocking Stroll on that lap and pretty much settled into the race now Lewis Hamilton uh, just uh, all he needs to do is pretty much cruise home but he needs he needs to win the rest of the races now he cannot afford to lose any more points to Valtteri Bottas this season because he Valtteri Bottas is closing in on a very famous title. He'll be the first Finnish champion since Kimi Raikkonen back in 2007. And the one before that, Mika Hakkinen in 1999 of course. Well, the Aston Martins. Uh, this, could spell uh, this could spell trouble for Sebastian Vettel as uh, Jackson Stays behind his teammate. I guess they want to see how things pan out first uh, before making any decisions on who leads where. Kimi Raikkonen is pretty much out of this race now and George Russell's coming in as well. So this would have been for the scheduled stop. And uh, they're going to get lapped by uh, the Mercedes. And uh, yeah, they're going to get easily lapped. Kimi Raikkonen's coming out of the pit exit here. And uh, is, are both Mercedes going to pass him? Just about. So lap, to, lap 20, and already the Mercedes have lapped uh, Russell and Raikkonen. 
So there's 19 seconds separating Raikkonen from Ocon. So Raikkonen's race is now ruined because he's had to give way to the race leaders. And uh, maybe without Al uh, the surprising outfit today, Alpine, way down in way P17 and position 18. Uh, it's not been a good weekend for Alpine. And uh, well, maybe Fernando Alonso's retirement rumours could be justified. And as we said at the top of the show, it is only a rumour. And the second rumour that came with that almost immediately was that Jackson was going to be the front runner to replace him. So Jackson has options. Uh, which for a lot of people makes a lot of people very happy because this kid like we said he's uh, he's had his moment today but uh, he still he still will be in the hearts of everybody I mean, Jackson has certainly earned his racing uh, badge in the first 14 races although maybe that move on stroll was a bit towards the edge definitely not over it and I'm glad the FIA at least and the stewards at least gave Jackson the warning over it. I'm glad about that. Just rain in a little bit. Don't break test others. I think Haas got. I think they got the. Uh, they appreciated the effort. Uh, but uh, it might be a worse punishment next time. So Jackson has definitely been warned there on that one. And so that's a thing that Max Verstappen was definitely known for. The change of direction. It wasn't. It was pretty much kind of the change of direction as well. It's what Max Verstappen was looked at early in his career to be fair just to add to the comparisons between uh, Jackson and Verstappen so here comes Lance Stride of the pits he's going to comfortably beat the Haas drivers then so Stroll has cleared Schumacher and Jackson so that is their run for points over today uh, unfortunately and uh, Schumacher staying ahead of Jackson he's doing a really good job there well, meanwhile at the front, status quo, Lewis Hamilton from Valtteri Bottas, these two have been nip and tuck all season long, it has been a vintage battle, it's not been as fierce as the battle between Hamilton and Rosberg from 2014 to 2016, it's definitely been a lot more reined in, uh, really because of the character that Valtteri Bottas is, uh, and Hamilton for that matter, they're both very cool headed characters. But uh, Rosberg and Hamilton have turned fierce with years of championship battles. This is really only the first time Lewis has been challenged by his own teammate. Since 2016, he spun! Oh my word! He spun! He's breached it! Lewis Hamilton has made a mistake! Oh my! And has he breached it? Is he out of the race? He's stuck there! Lewis Hamilton spun and he's stuck there! And uh, the safety car is deployed! The safety car is coming out for the first time this season. Lewis Hamilton has eventually turned it round and got back onto the track. Oh my goodness, he spun out of the race lead, Lewis Hamilton, and he's forced the appearance of the safety car. And uh, oh my goodness, this is a rare mistake here from Hamilton. He probably just takes too much throttle here. Oh, he doesn't even get on the curve. The car just gives out. Rare mistake. From Lewis Hamilton, the reigning champion, and the the safety car. Look, the safety car is out for the first time this season. He's picked up the race leader. Oh my God, we're not going to have a whole season without the appearance of the safety car. I think that's the right decision because I think Lewis is relatively beached. Plus, he probably had to let a couple of drivers through because there was only two seconds between him and Perez, uh, who was then in close company with others. There's Pierre Gasly. Making a pit stop under the safety car, and uh, the Aston Martin did as well. That's uh, that's Vettel. So Vettel's going to lose out to Stroll, but the Haas boys, unfortunately, are going to be too far behind. Oh my word! And Kimi Räikkönen there is a long way out of position. Now, Räikkönen and Russell, for all intents and purposes, should be unlapping themselves uh, because there is a rule in Formula One where you can unlap yourself but uh, Raikkonen and Russell haven't done it yet mind you to be fair the safety cars only picked up the first the first half of the field more or less so who does this aid now I don't think it really aids any it certainly aids Valtteri Bottas because now he's the race leader 
What a rare mistake by Lewis Hamilton. He just dropped it in that corner. And it forced the appearance of the safety car then. The debut of the Aston Martin safety car, his first appearance ever in Formula 1. We've had a Mercedes Benz for so long and we still do have it. There's the red Mercedes Benz at certain tracks. But this is the first time we're seeing ever the Aston Martin safety car. Led, uh, driven of course by the experienced hand of Bert Mylander. Followed by Valtteri Bottas and Sergio Perez. This brings Perez and others right back into play now. It'll all be what Bottas can do on the restart. It's stayed out for a few laps of safety car. It's a very minor incident. Lewis being semi beached in the gravel. I'm amazed he actually got out of that. There. There's uh, the Alfa Romeo. Uh, I think the Alfa Romeo is getting out of the way. That's Kimi Raikkonen. He's supposed to be unlapping himself. Raikkonen dropping out of the race, so he has car problems. That's the reason for that. So Kimi Raikkonen's out, and his miserable race is over because he had to pit on the first lap due to damage. So that's one less car for Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris to deal with because Raikkonen was right in the middle of that mess. The big loser here could be Carlos Sainz. George Russell's going to have to get right out of the way uh, because he's not unlapping himself. Which is unusual. So Russell is uh, having his race ruined. Because he's not being told to unlap himself. I guess it's because he's actually in the middle of the pack. But that means... Uh, that sh they should be letting him through. Surely they should be letting him through. I mean the straight is perfect. Russell's only got like four cars between him. And the safety car. Or five if you count the safety car of course. Well, Nicky Lauda, the great, great Nicky Lauda, the last man to take victory here in 1985. It's going to read 2022, uh, 2021 rather, Valtteri Bottas. We're already getting a year ahead of ourselves, obviously with the new cars coming out. Valtteri Bottas is going to become the latest winner of the Dutch Grand Prix, it seems. Well, if Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc have any say in the matter, that could change very quickly. We know Ferrari have a really fast car with the Ferrari B-Spec unit. And that's certainly aiding Haas in the last couple of races. Monza is going to be an absolute feast for speed uh, for Ferrari and Haas and Alfa Romeo for that matter. You can expect those cars to fly. The Haas cars actually might really benefit at Monza to be fair. They certainly struggled at most downforce tracks. And Jackson was super fast from the banking when he passed Schumacher and Stroll earlier in the race. The safety car's coming in at the end of his slap then. We're about to go green flag racing. Bottas, in effect, becomes the safety car as Bert Mylander will pull into the pits. The lights are off. And he'll be in at the end of the lap. Bottas controls the pace. We've had drama uh, at restarts before. Tuscany last year, of course. We had the whole melee. Uh, which caused a red flag. Uh, hopefully we get none of that today. Because that was a rather scary incident. George Russell's going to have to get right out of the way. Because he's going to be lapped. Green flag. Here at Zanvor. We are racing again. And here we go. Valtteri Bottas gets away very well. Long, uh, Sergio Perez is in close company. George Russell gets right out of the way. And everyone is going to soar past him. Schumacher almost hit him there. I think. And uh, that was very inconvenient for Mick Schumacher. And the Latifi's trying to go round uh, the inside of the Alpine and his teammate as well. The Alpines are having a dreadful weekend, really. Uh, down in uh, 16th and 18th. Uh, with Fernando and Ocon. At the front, Baltas has already raced away. Of course, you will not have uh, DRS until two laps after the safety car has come in. Uh, so, no DRS for these drivers at the moment. Obviously, they have ERS to... Mitigate that. And, uh, no real movers off the start. Looks like everyone stayed in formation, as it were. And uh, Bottas is just too strong at the front uh, for anyone at the moment. And uh, he's already got a half second lead. And uh, someone. Someone to move somewhere, I think. Uh, I'm not sure who that was. Well, Lewis Hamilton now, after his spin, is down to sixth. Pierre Gasly is slowing, here Gasly slowing down, this could be a very 
Very, uh, and Shubek has got held up, and Jackson goes round them into P11, uh, P12. Gasly is heading into the pits, his car's damaged, or his car's got something wrong, and, and where was the, where was Gasly going there? Why is he not pulled into the pits? Oh, my, oh, he's been to the left, he takes George Russell out! Oh my goodness me, Pierre Gasly, what are you doing? That was a, that was an idiotic move by Pierre Gasly. Safety car deployed. No surprise, Pierre Gasly, a moment of madness, he's took George Russell out with him, what was that about? That is astounding, why did Gasly not pull into the pits here? He was already slowing down, he's already got a problem, he holds on Mick Schumacher so all his hard work's been undone, he'll be furious, and then he, does he, does he want to get out of the way of the pits? I don't know, but he's doing the right thing here. But then for some reason, he veers to the left and takes Russell out. And that is not the best piece of racing I've ever seen Peter Gasly do. That is entirely Peter Gasly's fault. What was he thinking? Oh my word, well we have the safety car out again. It only came in a lap ago. It's out again now. So now, after not having a safety car appearance for 13 races, in round 14, or I think this might be round 13 actually, now we have it appearing twice, and moment of complete brain lapse from Pig Gasly. What was that about? Poor George Russell, he was already a lap down anyway, and uh, that's his race completely kaput now. And uh, well, he might be a race winner, Pig Gasly, but that definitely wasn't his finest moment. We've been in the redemption arc for Pig Gasly since last year, but that. Certainly wasn't his best uh, moment there. I have no idea what Pierre was doing there. He literally got in mixed way. Calm down, Aiden. It's okay. We're still gonna be the chance of some points here. Copy. What do you think we should do? We should try and get Sonoda and Vettel on the restart. If you can't get it within a lap, let me back past to reinvert the positions. I don't know if I'm really going to get much chance here. We're not on the right tyres. But I'll give it a shot. Copy. Uh, so Aiden Jackson is uh, really frustrated there. And who can blame him? I think he'll be going to the stewards after this race and saying, Why was I given a warning? And, well, we don't know what happened to Gasly. I, wouldn't, I would not be surprised if Gasly has a grid penalty for that. Because that's literally... Taking another, that's causing a collision. So if Pierre Gasly doesn't have a grid penalty for the next race, I will be very surprised uh, because that that was pretty blatant, to be fair. And I think that's what Jackson is kind of saying. Like he got in mix way uh, and then takes Russell out. Uh, I hope he gets something for it to kind of balance it out. That I got a black and white flag. We didn't really hear Jackson on the radio after that, uh, so I guess he really accepted uh, his part in it, even though he wasn't trying to block him. He does say. And like we said, the Haas can be deceptive in that in that uh, manner. But um, wow, okay, so we have a second safety car period then, <laughs> after a lap after the first one. Uh, we've not had a safety car appearing all season long. We've got it twice in one race, so that pretty much makes up for it. So uh, uh, Bartley Bottas then uh, leading round again. Uh, no one really benefited from the first time out, and it's going to be a shorter period I think this time. Safety cars in this lap, and all Valtteri Bottas really needs to do is do what he did last time, uh, because that uh, gave him a half second lead over Sergio Perez. The Red Bulls definitely don't have it over the Mercedes in the second half of the season. They've really struggled to even keep up uh, with them on most parts. Gaz uh, Perez at one point was two seconds behind both of them. Uh, so here we go then. On the back for the final time, when will Bottas floor the throttle? Green flag here at Zandvoort. We are green flag racing again. We've just got six laps to go as they cross the line. And Perez has made a better restart there. And uh, he's right close to Bottas there. So this could be interesting. But again, like last time, no DRS until after the second racing lap of green flag racing after the safety car period. Uh, so bon Perez will have to try and stay close to Bottas in the first lap or two. Uh, to give himself an opportunity, but Mercedes' power is just towering over the Red Bull. Is already again. Man, Bottas seems very strong 
in the first to the middle part of the circuit. He's already given himself a half second lead over Perez. And, uh, well, let's see. He's on the hard tyres. He's going to the end. And uh, Jackson, did he make any uh, inroads on Sonoda and Vettel? I don't think so. Uh, he's already a second behind uh, Sonoda, so I wouldn't be surprised if Jackson goes to reinvert the positions at Haas like they instructed to give Mick Schumacher back 12th place. It's not really going to affect them in terms of a championship, but Mick has had the better of Jackson this weekend. Over the last two races, Schumacher has looked like he's reined in Jackson a little bit. Uh, over the last two races, looks like Mick is starting to come into his own. Jackson does pull to the side. He is going to let Mick Schumacher back past. He's going to have to be careful, though, of Alonso coming around the outside. And uh, that's ruined Alonso's race, and he got passed by the Alfa Romeo there. Uh, but Jackson had to reinvert the positions as Haas instructed. There was nothing really wrong with that. And, uh, well, what a shame for Mick Schumacher. And yet again, the car just doesn't seem up to it to give him any points at the moment. And uh, Jackson's not been that much better in race terms anyway. He was intent for a bit. Sorry, guys. I, I couldn't get him. We were on the wrong tyres. It's all right. It's all right, Aiden. Definitely appreciate it. Let me back three. Let's get this card to the end. Copy. Obviously a delayed transmission. Shame about Mick, you had good pace. Yeah, I mean, we could do anything about it, can we? It's alright, but it's fun. <laughs> you gotta love that from Mick Schumacher. Just not blaming his team, not blaming anything, just getting on with it. That demeanor of Mick Schumacher is, is one hearts, I'll tell you that. Such a good kid. Mick Schumacher and it's showing again there. Jackson and Schumacher just saying it's okay. We we didn't have it right. There was no way we were going to change, but it's good. And uh, they've had a tough year, Schumacher and Jackson, as a collective with the car, just letting them down. I mean, Jackson's obviously had the three points, but it just hasn't been half this year, and it was always going to be the case. But today, they accept that there is going to be races like there was and I think the the bubbling up of the little frustration that Jackson had in Hungary was really just due to the characteristics of the track it just didn't suit him there uh, but they seem very much more calm and collected today and Mick Schumacher just such an impressive young head on shoulders that bear just incredible weight when you think about it and uh, that kid has just got such a good head on his shoulders he's going to be exactly like his father when it comes to team building and just the way he feels around the team. A lot of people call it Mazepin's car and Schumacher's team. Definitely the case this season, although Mazepin hasn't even took part in it uh, this year. Valtteri Bottas has already grown to a second lead. He has broken the DRS for Sergio Perez, but even with DRS, no one is uh, stopping this man from taking another hat trick of wins. Bottas is just on it. And uh, at this point, it really does like, look like Bottas' title to lose. And he's in command of it. He's had to wait a while to be in a championship fight. But he's finally in one. And he's thriving in it completely. It's Lewis Hamilton that's having the mistakes creep in. To be fair, Spa wasn't his fault and I still don't understand why he felt the need to stay in the box for 10 seconds and the team not change his tyres because I can almost I can be almost assured that Hamilton didn't jump the start and was excuse me receive a 10 second stop go penalty they don't even exist anymore for the most part obviously with the time penalties given uh, applied to uh, for misdemeanors these days well it's a bit of like deja vu because Perez has been ca uh, chasing Bottas and for Stappen who has had a very quiet race to be fair he's chasing Hamilton and if there is going to be something for the Max Legion to cheer it's here if he can pass Hamilton right now Another great day for Ferrari and Lando Norris as well. Another great day. Charles Leclerc P3, 
Lando Norris P4, Carl Sainz B5. They've definitely been the highlights of this season, that's for sure. Absolutely stelling performances yet again from those three. And two of them are race winners this season in the forms of uh, Norris and uh, Sainz. Leclerc has not been so lucky. But uh, if Ferrari can have this power unit go into next season, they will certainly be a force to be reckoned with. And uh, now around the banking. And, uh, obviously it's all kind of status quo with everyone getting DRS, so no one's really going to have the adv outright advantage. Three retirements today, Kimi Raikkonen with a problem during the safety car period. George Russell taken out by Pierre Gasly after he was already slowing in a moment of madness to be honest we are on the penultimate lap of this Dutch Grand Prix it has been dominated by Mercedes but Lewis Hamilton had this race in the bag but a spin that caused the first safety car deployment this season has pretty much scuffered that and he's now down in sixth and struggling to even pass Carl Sainz and he's got back Max Verstappen bearing down on him. Well, as the great Murray Walker used to say, anything can happen in Formula 1 and it usually does. And this, this Dutch Grand Prix has had everything happen. It's been a crazy return to Zandvoort. It's one of my favourite tracks to be fair, the bankings are fantastic. It really gives you a great NASCAR feel. And uh, the bankings definitely gave us a great camera shot of Jackson Stroll earlier. Well, it may not have been to the Max Legion's desired uh, success for Max Verstappen, but it's been a triumphant return of the Dutch Grand Prix. The last one held in 1985, won by the late great Nicky Lauda. Missing from the calendar last year due to the changes to the calendar due to the pandemic. We are back here today. And Valtteri Bottas, and Mercedes in particular, have dominated. But Valtteri Bottas inherited the lead after Hamilton spun to cause a safety car. Bottas has had the legs of Perez all race long since. And right at this very moment, you have to say that Valtteri Bottas is in the prime form and prime position to win the 2021 Formula 1 Championship. The outsider has firmly stood his grip on the title. Valtteri Bottas wins the returning Dutch Grand Prix, the fastest lap with it, with a 113.4. He's lit up the timing squeeze in this final stint. Followed home by Perez. And Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Carl Sainz, Lewis Hamilton drops to sixth after his spin. Followed home by Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo and both Aston Martins have beaten Haas today. Despite being behind them before the pit stops. And uh, more misery for Haas. But really, to be fair to them, it's been their best race of the season as a collective so far. With Schumacher 12th and Jackson 13th. But this man and, their men, and those men at Mercedes riding towards an 8th Constructors Championship and I think they're 7th in a row. It's been so long. And uh, another 26 points for the ever impeccable Valtteri Bottas. He seems completely unfazed by this championship position he finds himself in. Uh, most people moving up a spot due to Hamilton's spin. Uh, Verstappen made his way from 10th to 5th, not a great race for Max Verstappen, it has to be said. Uh, he spent the first stint behind Pierre Gasly uh, for most of it, until Gasly had to pit the Aston Martins triumphant over the Haas boys, despite being behind them. Yuki Tsunoda was in between them in 11th place. Uh, Antonio Giovinazzi, Esteban Alcon, not a great weekend for Alpine, uh, down in 15th and 16th. Out of the TV, Pierre Gasly, George Russell. And Kimi Raikkonen were your retirements today. So taking a look at the championship standings then. Valtteri Bottas a 64 point. I think it's a 64 point lead over Lewis Hamilton. 
uh, a title's uh, challenger's biggest uh, kind of gap uh, against Hamilton. Uh, for the first time since 2016, Max Verstappen drops to fifth again after another subpar race. Uh, Mick Schumacher, despite uh, his best finish of the season so far, still stays in 19th because George Russell. Uh, I I'm not actually sure why he's behind George Russell there. Uh, Mercedes convincing 143 point lead over Ferrari. Red Bull only had themselves to blame uh, for the reliability failures early in the season. It's been a great return to the Dutch Grand Prix here at Zandvoort. Valtteri Bottas has pretty much inherited the win to be fair, but no one was catching Mercedes either or. It's another win for them. It's another win for Valtteri Bottas. Dare we say he might just become the 2022 champion. We're off to the Temple Speed in Italian Grand Prix next. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you then. And as we sign off from Zandvoort this afternoon, we now point you in the direction of our friends at the Trevor Sport YouTube channel. As tomorrow at 8pm British Standard Time, Trevor Ryder, Trevor Walker, Trevor Hunt and all the Trevor Sports crew will be bringing you live coverage of the third round of the 1994 Championship season at the San Marino Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher has thoroughly dominated the first two rounds, taking wins in both but there have been serious arguments and rumblings over the legality of the Benetton. Schumacher currently leads the standings, however, by 10 points for Damon Hill, while Ayrton Senna and the Williams has amassed 6 points after having to retire from the Pacific Grand Prix last time out with transmission failure. Can the legendary Brazilian finally get his championship up and running and claw back some of Schumacher's early advantage, amidst the constant rumbling on of the legality of the Benetton team? One way to find out, Tune in tomorrow at 8pm British Standard Time on the Trevor Sports YouTube channel. The link is in the description below.